Wow! Wow! Wait, the blue! Another new day. We've got the newly printed front cover for the buttons. I still have to take the support material out of this print. I started doing it at home and I was like, ah, I probably should do this on camera. Before we mount it though, we're gonna have to epoxy it and then give it a nice coat of black flat paint or maybe even gloss, we'll see. I have both, so let's get to it. Finishing, we're gonna be using the XTC 3D epoxy brush on liquid coating for 3D printed parts. Perfect. It's gonna fill in all these little like lines and sides from the PLA, and it should be pretty simple. There's instructions, it comes with a foam brush and a little measuring cup, and then a little tongue depressor to stir it. But before we put this on, we're gonna test it out on the machine and make sure it works and make sure everything fits before I go through all the time of epoxying it. I'm pretty confident it's gonna fit because the two lined up almost identically. Why is the lens cap still kind of down? Better, maybe. Okay, so after much testing and finally getting these holes to be the right size, I did it off camera because it was just very tedious and didn't feel like moving the camera back and forth and back and forth. So we got it, it works. And I'm actually glad I didn't record it because now you get to wait to the end to see what it actually looks like. That being said, it's time to epoxy it. It has a 10 minute working time and then a four hour cure time. So it's two to one mix, two A and one part B. Two parts of this and one part of this. Why they're two different bottles, I guess, I'm assuming. It's about right. Okay, so it's in the cabin right now. We're gonna let that sit for a few hours. I wanna touch up on these parts. So we're gonna hit it with a wire wheel. Really wish I had a sandblaster. So we just plastic wrapped this capacitor cover, and now we're going to give it a little incision. The key to good painting is good taping. The next day. I let the epoxy dry overnight and this is kind of the final before I paint it. This epoxy works really well with paint, so we're gonna see how it all comes together. <laughs> and now we wait. So it's been drying for about 45 minutes. Gonna give it another coat. Now let's focus on the second to last part of this entire build. We're redoing this, we're finishing off the top, and then we're adding this color to everywhere except for this part. This edge is gonna be a nice polished off metal as well as this part. That's clean as fuck. Oh, you painted that though? Yeah. It looks tight. It's fun, dude. It's I, I kept some of the original, like, yeah. patina on it, I and then, it. like. I love it. It is time to reveal the fully restored Delta drill press that I got from a government auction one month ago today. But before I show you, let's see what my friends have to think. So, this is what it was before a month and five days ago. That's pretty! Whoa! <laughs> it really is it's, new! It's 
it's really vibrant. <laughs> wow, I'm genuinely surprised. You made this? They're restored, yeah. That's dope. This is really cool. Oh my god, that looks so good. How did you do that? Wait, what? It looks brand new. What is that? Damn. Wow. This is what it is now. Oh my goodness. Wait, the blue. It looks brand new. If you did enjoy this video in this series, please share with your friends, like the video, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload a video. You might notice I'm in a different place and I'm in my girlfriend Julia's garage because we're gonna be redoing the garage in the next videos as well as restoring all of these other tools which is then gonna be used to help make really awesome pieces of furniture and I'm super, super excited for you to come along that journey with us. It's really gonna be a fun channel and I really hope you stick around. And if you remember earlier in this video, I said I wanted a sandblaster. Look what this is right here. We got a sandblaster. A video is coming on that soon as well. But that being said, this was a really big step for me. I always wanted a drill press and all these types of tools like a bandsaw and a sander. I never conceptualized getting them or how I would get them because they're so expensive. I'm here to dispel that belief that you don't have to pay thousands of dollars to get your own tools because on average, I spent $140 per tool in the $840 that I spent to get all of these tools, the bandsaw, the sander, the drill press, the radial arm saw, the scroll saw, the vise, and the vacuum. I had no idea what I was doing with this thing the entire time and I just learned along the way and that was the most fun part of it all. I hope you take some inspiration from this and I will see you in the next video.